leading political scientists, Martin Gillens, came out with a study of the relation between public attitudes and public policy. And what he shows is that about 70% of the population has no way of influencing policy. They might as well be in some other country. And the population knows it. What it's led to is a population that's angry, frustrated, uh, hates institutions. It's not acting constructively to try to respond to this. There is popular mobilization and activism, but in very self-destructive directions. It's taking the form of unfocused anger, attacks on one another and on vulnerable targets. That's what happens in cases like this. It is corrosive of social relations, but that's the point. The point is to make people hate and fear each other and look out only for themselves and don't do anything for anyone else. One place you see it strikingly is on uh, April 15th. April 15th is a kind of a measure, the day you pay your taxes, of how uh, democratic a society is. Uh, if, it, to the, if a society is really democratic, uh, April 15th would be a day of celebration. It's a day when the population gets together, uh, decides to fund the programs and activities that they have formulated and agreed upon. What could be better than that? So you should celebrate it. It's not the way it is in the United States. It's a day of uh, mourning. It's a day in which some uh, alien power, you know, has nothing to do with you, is coming down to steal your hard-earned money, and you do everything you can to keep them from doing it. Well, that is a kind of a measure of the extent to which, at least in popular consciousness, democracy is actually functioning. Not a very attractive picture. The tendencies that we've been describing within American society, unless they're reversed, it's going to be an extremely ugly society. I mean, a society that's based on Adam Smith's vile maxim, you know, all for myself, nothing for anyone else. A society in which normal human instincts and emotion of sympathy, solidarity, mutual support, in which they're kind of like driven out. That's a society so ugly, I don't even know who'd want to live in it. I wouldn't want my children to. If the society is based on control by private wealth, it will reflect the values that it in fact does reflect the value that is greed and the desire to maximize personal gain at the expense of others. Now, any society, uh, maybe a small society based on that principle is ugly, but it can survive. A global society based on that principle is headed for massive destruction. I don't think we're smart enough to uh, design in any detail what a uh, a perfectly just and free society would be like. I think we can give some guidelines and more significant, we can ask how we can progress in that direction. John Dewey, the, the leading social philosopher in the late 20th century, uh, he argued that until all institutions, production, commerce, uh, uh, media, unless they're all under participatory democratic control, uh, we will not have uh, a functioning democratic society. As he put it, policy will be the shadow cast by business over society. <laughs>